No, I'm delighted to be joined by FBD brand ambassador, three-time national badminton champion and 2017 under-17 European Championship gold medalist, Nat Nguyen. FBD Insurance is a principal sponsor to Team Ireland since September of 2018. As part of its sponsorship, FBD is supporting Team Ireland's Olympic hopefuls to enable them to focus on personal bests and breakthrough performances at the Summer Olympic Games in Tokyo. Head over to FBD's social channels to see the latest in FBD's My Olympic Journey video series featuring Nat Nguyen. And Nat Nguyen is with me now. Thanks a lot for joining me, Nat. How are you? Thank you for having me. I'm good. I'm good in yourself. Not too bad. No, keeping well, keeping well. I, I watched your uh, your FBD video earlier this morning. Um, yeah. Very well put together, very well put together. One of the um, the, the lines that stood out to me, um, you were asked, I think, how important is it to have the attitude that, that you can become an Olympic champion? And you said, obviously, in my head, I think I can do it. You're clearly a confident individual, it's fair to say. Yeah, I feel you have to be. Don't you to be uh, good at your um, at your work, um, but yeah, obviously in my head, like I said, I think I can do it. But there, I have to take. I'm a lot older now. I'm not that young, twelve year old thinking that I can do this. I can do that. But there's only if you want to win an Olympics, that is given to one person. And yeah, in my head, I feel definitely why not me. But then I have to look at it in a bigger perspective and say, okay. Um, well, if it doesn't work out, um, I won't be too down or something. You have to, I have, think I have a bigger perspective now than I had when I was younger, but it was definitely in my head. I feel I can do it. Yes. <laughs> well, you have to be confident in your work. Yes. Absolutely. Confident in your ability. And why wouldn't you be? Um, yeah. you, for people who might, might not be familiar with your, your, with your background, you, you have a Vietnamese background, a Vietnamese family, yes. of course, and uh, you moved over to, wasn't it, Calvin, and eventually ended up in Dublin. So maybe just give people a, yeah. uh, an idea of your background for those who might not be familiar with your story. Yeah, so we moved over, me and my parents, my sister moved over when I was six to Ireland, to Calvin, and yeah, looking for a better life, really, and yeah, and it was a big gamble. It was a big risk to take because we had to leave everything behind in Vietnam. Family, friends, going to a new country, learning new languages, trying to fit in. The culture is different. Food, the weather is even different. <laughs> so, yeah, I think it was a big risk and I think it's paid off. And my parents took a big risk, yeah, and it paid off definitely, I think, yeah. I'm sure the, the Vietnamese culture is something that's still very important to you. I noticed in the video as well, the lovely Vietnamese food dishes that you had <laughs> serving as well. So is that something, yeah. even though you were six when you moved, I'm sure that's something that's still very important to you. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think my, my parents are very Vietnamese culture. So they're very, I think Vietnamese culture, you would say they're very hardworking, very, very hardworking. And yeah, we never really go away from that. Uh, we know our roots. And family's the most important thing to in the Vietnamese, Vietnamese culture. So definitely for me, I feel I am very hardworking, and I feel that my family has um, has is very meaningful to me. Yeah, yeah. Had I read somewhere that uh, they were so hardworking that they even had you working in in the Chinese in in uh, or the takeaway in Clare Hall over lockdown? Is that true? Yes, I wouldn't say they had me. Um, I wanted to help. Yeah, Fair I enough. wanted to help because at the time yeah COVID happened and then there was no orders and then we had to let some staff go and my then my mom and dad was doing everything everything and so then I just wanted to help I was I was doing everything like delivery driving doing the counter work um taking orders and um, cutting the food preparing the food so I was doing literally everything but just again if my family need a little help and of course I'm gonna be there and help them when I can <laughs> yeah exactly yes. when you're not busy with yeah. training um yeah what what i suppose you, you would have tried different sports when you were younger but i read somewhere that you you started off playing a bit of bit of soccer a bit of uh, football with woodlawn fc yes you were a striker yes. for, for that club based in santry so uh, maybe yeah. tell us how about about your your general sporting background first general sport i think it's only been football <laughs> and bampton um i have yeah, it's been like that. I've only played, I think, those two sports. I've played, obviously, in school and sports day, you mess around with everything, really. But, um, yeah, I've only really played for clubs or played at a good level uh, for football and and badminton, yeah. Um, but I follow a lot of other sports also. I follow a lot of F1, um, tennis, and, yeah, um, MMA 
course. Um, Conor McGregor is my one of my one of my idols growing up as a teenager. Yeah, so I think I'm a huge fan of MMA, and I still watch UFC uh, fight nights most weeks. Yeah. And do you remember the first time then you held a, a, a badminton racket uh, in your hand and you thought, right, this is this is something I'm going to, to pursue further? Yeah, I definitely remember when holding it, but I didn't have that envision, that vision of saying this is something that I had to, <laughs> um, this is something that I want to do in the future because I didn't like it at the start, to be honest, playing badminton. It was just something that, uh, that I started to do when we moved over to Ireland because I was bored. I just followed my dad. That's how I got into it, to the local hall. And yeah, and that's one of the reasons why I started just to not be bored and just do something during the day and just try, and also to fit in. Um, it was tough moving over to Ireland. Um, as a six-year-old, um, not knowing the language. To be honest, I didn't even know I was going to move over to Ireland. I don't know what was going on <laughs> at the time. So yeah, I was, it was one of the ways to try to fit into the culture and try to get to learn the language and yeah um to adapt to the new culture yeah yes most irish people will be uh, familiar with badminton um and maybe not at an, at an olympic level but uh, for some people who maybe don't know much about the sport or only watch it in passing uh, maybe what sort of skills does it take what sort of um i guess strength does it take for someone i'm sure reaction speeds are very important but for someone who yeah. maybe doesn't watch much badminton what do you need to be working on week in week out to be honest badminton is one of the complete like the most complete sport i think um there's physical mental side of it um you can name our speed endurance um strength power um because you need everything to put it in together and then you have need to have a cool head to think, all right, to outmaneuver your opponent, to um, outthink your opponent, to yeah. So, and obviously your reaction has to be insanely quick because the shuttle's coming at you. I don't know, like um, the fastest smash is like four hundred kilometers per hour, so the shuttle can come at you at that speed. Um, so you're you have to be lightning quick, and then you have to react, but you also have to be in control and be productive. So it's it's like a chess game, a very, very physical chess game, I would say, yeah. yeah. How do you practice the reaction speeds? I've seen the videos of different people doing, you know, the, I guess Formula One drivers do it as well, where yeah, you drop the they, tennis they drop balls. The ball and cost, yeah. yeah, that is one of our practices. Our, we have, like, um, our hand-eye coordination session. We, we do that. We actually do that. And, yeah, it's, to be honest, if you're always hitting the shuttle and always training shuttle coming fast at you, in routines that's basically practicing your reactions as well and um, yeah i think that's we don't really focus on that because that that's just comes with training because the show is always coming fast at you and also but there are different exercises um off court you can do where you can just patch one eye or something like that and really try to focus on your action with one eye and then you take it off and then it's, everything's a lot slower that could help yeah you were probably luckier than, than some in, in lockdown in that you had, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, your sister had the CrossFit gym and you had the shuttle machine yeah. as well. Uh, yeah. to help you along. Yeah. Uh, did that, that must have helped to have that uh, facility even during lockdown. Yes, I think that was, if I didn't have that, I would have went crazy a little bit. Um, for me not to train every day would be like oh, a big shock to my system. But I was in the gym literally most days of the week, just working, not just I was doing CrossFit workouts. I was just trying to stay in shape. And then I was trying to do little things to improve my technical side of the game. And yeah, I was then doing some couple of videos on watching my opponent's games and watching my games, see what I can improve on. So there's definitely in lockdown, there's loads of other things you can improve except um, than being on court. So that's what I focus on on all the off court sides of um, the game aspect. And yeah, I was very lucky. I was very lucky that my sister owns a gym and I could just pop down and get a workout in or do a little workout with her. It was just something that to keep you going. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm always fascinated. And you mentioned a couple of those sports there, the, the, you know, the psychology of the individual sports, you know, like tennis players like Federer and Nadal and, and you know, in Formula One, even the likes of Hamilton, Max Verstappen. Um, yeah, and even in play, you know, Ronnie O'Sullivan in snooker or boxers, mm. the you know, individual yeah. versus team sports. What mm. has you drawn to to the individual sport as opposed to playing with a team? Yeah, I think 
for the individual sport, there's only you. You can only blame yourself. It's you that's hitting the shoulder of the net. But if you're in a team sport, it's in your football, you could have a great game as a striker and then your team lose. And then your defenders can make one mistake and that could cost it. And that's that's not in your control. So, but with in the individual in the individual sport, what kind of like about it? It's it's just you. If you play well, you play really well. If you play bad, it's you. There's nothing else affecting you. You're the one that's in control. Um, so I think that I like I like being responsible for my <laughs> results. Let's say yeah, yeah. I think that's 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 the main. I've, I've seen, uh, it's a fair point. I've seen a lot of people. Uh, and I guess individual sports people do this a lot as well, where they write things down and give themselves goals. I, I've seen in a video as well, you have you have some quotes and I guess motivational things written at the end of your bed even. Yeah, yeah. It's just something I wake up and I see it every single day. It's just something that gets me out of bed, something that motivates me, something that drives me. If you're waking up and you feel bad, you just look, oh, shit. all right, this is the goal that I want. I, I need to be... I, all right, if I feel bad, all right, I need to be feeling better. I need to do something to get myself feeling better. So to to produce, to be, um, to produce that goal, to even try to get close to it. So that's something that's been a great help for me because when obviously you don't wake up feeling great every single day. Mm. So it's just something to remind you of what your really goal and what your your main reason or your why and why are you doing this exactly. Something to push you, yeah. One of the quotes I saw that you have written in your wall, it's what you do in the dark that puts you in the light. That's a great quote. That's probably something that, yeah. you know, on days yeah. where you wake up and you maybe don't feel like training that day or something, that's probably something that gives you that little extra yeah. bit of motivation maybe. Yeah, exactly. Um, you don't want to waste one single session, a bad training session, when you know it's you can make it good. So it's, and also that quote, I think, it says a lot about me as well. I don't, I like to, yeah, work extra when no one's looking or something like that. And no one is watching and put in the work when no one's there. Also, that's, that's when I feel the real work is done because everyone is training nine to 11, four to six. That's, that's the typical badminton training, but no one's training nine to 11, then doing a little extra for half an hour between that. Then after training, doing a little extra half an hour. No one's seen that part. And over time that adds up and I feel if you're consistent and you're really motivated and driven and you can keep that up, then you can be successful. Then you can produce good things. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, yeah. <laughs> and like, do you have, do you have someone like maybe a, I know a guest team Ireland and all the athletes are provided with these if they, if they want them or want to avail of them, but someone like a sports psychologist, someone who, you know, you can go and talk to on the good days or the bad days, or, or maybe is it, is it your family members that maybe fill that, uh, I guess role as well yes um I feel I have I, I do have a psychologist in the institute but I think I work with everyone around me I just talk to you can learn anything from anyone I feel so especially to my coaches um psychologists uh, and my family members and my close friends a few my few close friends only um but yeah we definitely talk and and like share your ideas and experience and that's and your emotion and your feelings and definitely if you share your feelings with someone and they felt the same and maybe they could help you and guide you i don't think it's just a psychology i think you can learn um from anyone and take something from anyone really yeah yeah uh, well how big a, a moment uh, so you're you're what 20 years of age now Nat, is it yes yes so, 20 so like, years how big a moment was London 2012, those Olympics where you were probably 11 or 12 years of age watching yeah. those games on the TV? When you saw the badminton on the TV at the London Games, was that a, a key turning point for you in a moment where you thought, okay, this is this is a sport yeah. I'm really going to, to knuckle down with? Yeah, um, I think my hero at the time was, he was in the final, his name was Lee Chang Wei from Malaysia, and he lost the final very closely. And I was devastated. I think I <laughs> cried a little bit. And that's, it hit me when he lost. And I was watching the game. I was like, I want to do that. I want to be in the Olympic final. I want to be there. Um, I believe I can be there. I, I see myself there. So that's something that, that, was all, that was in my head after. I was like, I, then my, my favorite player lost. And I was like, I want to avenge his defeat. I want to win for him or something. As a young kid. But, uh, that's, that's, that's when it kind of you know, click me like, right. 
if you want it, just go for it. Just click and just give it your best shot. Um, and yeah, here we are now. <laughs> and, and I guess we need we need personalities like that in in sports like badminton to to keep the interest up and to increase the interest even further. We had uh, our own Scott Evans in in yes. Rio in 2016, and you know that yeah. getting to the last 16 and ripping off the shirt and all that stuff. <laughs> how, how big inspiration was that for you? You know, four or five years ago. Yeah, it was huge. I remember I was playing uh, a competition during that, but I was actually, I was just watching the game while I was should be focusing for the co- little competition that I had, but I was just watching him, um, yeah, winning and then taking his shirt off. <laughs> I remember that day actually quite very well. Um, but yeah, that's something that I like to do in this game coming up uh, to make the last 16, to get out with the group stage, to win matches, um, to beat. If you if you if you want to get to the last sixteen, you have to win the group. And to win the group, you have to beat a seed, which is top sixteen, one of the top sixteen players in the world. So that was very tough, very um, hard challenge. But I definitely feel that I have that in my arsenal, and on any given day, um, I can produce a result. Yeah. And I'm sure, like even the likes of Sam and Chloe McGee and mm. Scott Evans as well. I'm sure you've you've you know, gone to them for advice at different points. Have they been good and forthcoming with their advice and help around, uh, around you know, little things that are, are pointers that you want to pick up for your own career? Yeah, definitely. Um, Sam and Chloe, I've been practicing with them since oh, 13, 14. So they've been, they've always given me, and we play for the same club, and we're always literally traveling with each other for the last how long, I can't remember. And there's always, always something you can learn from them because they're so much vastly experienced to me. And, all the little things that little chats we have that I just take from them and they probably don't know it but I take a lot from them and how they train how they practice and how folks they are and even Scott I was practicing with Scott in Denmark for the last uh two months of last year uh two three months of last year so he was a great help to me um he was very supportive when I was over in Denmark training um so yeah they've been a massive uh, influence on me and my development and definitely um someday i will have to give back in some way and <laughs> yeah the the uh, i know a few years ago i remember uh, hearing an interview with you and you were talking about balancing your leaving cert at, at the st david cbs <laughs> in rt yeah. practice how, how yeah how much easier or is it easier now that you you just have just have the badminton to concentrate on because i know uh, back then, you're probably juggling a few different balls and trying to concentrate on a few different things. But at least now you have that ultimate focus, which is Tokyo. Yes, yes. Um, at the time, oh, because since I finished school and I came out of school, I just trained badminton full time. And my expectation went up because now I'm training full time. My results should be better than I was in school when I was a little bit less focused than I was now. But I think that, that, that expectation kind of decrease my form a little bit so I think you have to balance it as well it's you need to find a good distractions also outside of Bampton than than just only only Bampton so definitely I I have recently I've enjoyed my time off Bampton like just spending a lot more time with my family for example or just going for doing the things that I like to do and just not only focusing on Bampton 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 um, so I just you pray you appreciate these times more, um, and then the Bampton starts to get better. I think school when I was in school, I had less expectation because I wasn't training properly. I was probably training once, or uh, I was I wasn't training enough to be a professional badminton. So my expectation was lower, but I played a lot better. But now uh, I've come out of being in school. I'm training every day, twice a day. My expectation is higher, but somehow my results are just literally like below par sometimes so I think I have to find the right balance also and I'm I think I'm on it I'm finding the right balance now and what works for me and what yeah what works for me yeah it, like it's an impressive maturity to hear you speak about you know family and, and noticing the important things even in the, the video the FPD video you said uh, mm-hmm. family is very important do what makes you happy yeah. and do it with the people that you love and that yes. I guess has yes. lockdown taught you, and, and I'm sure other sports people are the same, that this, yeah. uh, this driven uh, goal of just winning, it, it's probably put things in perspective for you, has it, over the last 12 months? Definitely. And definitely within the last 12 months, I've matured a lot. 
But yeah, then the last 12 months, I realized the importance of family and my family and how supportive, how important they are in my life. Without them, I probably wouldn't even be in Ireland now. Without my parents, I wouldn't be even be in Ireland now. So yeah, if definitely the last 12 months has grown on me and um, helped me mature-wise um, just, again, see things from different perspective that, all right, uh, it's not about Bampton. It's not about always winning in Bampton. It's about your loved ones. Um, it's about um, enjoying your time and it's about spending it with the people you love and spending it with positive people that helps you grow um my family so that's my family so exactly I you just realized I just realized these things and yeah um I think that's and then that helps my badminton game so I think trying to find that balance is I'm trying I'm starting to find my little ba my balance now so that's and then my badminton game I feel is um, it's improving and getting better each day because I have this maturity and this perspective uh, in my life. So definitely within the last 12 months, I've, I've matured a lot and grew as a person. Yeah. Do you think finally then Nat, that, that that will help you for, for Tokyo? Because I, I know a lot of Irish athletes and athletes all over the world were, were very disappointed when the Olympics mm. were, were canceled or rescheduled because yeah. of COVID. But do you, are you glad, almost glad in a way now that you've got the extra 12 months to, to prepare and to mature as well, as you said? Yes, yes. Um, it's, it's like a blessing in disguise. I have 12 months to get better physically, mature, um, just grow, uh, learn more things on court. Um, so I think that 12 months uh, of pure growth for me, it was, it's been, I'm a, a totally different person than I, I'm now than I was 12 months ago. That's the way I feel. So I'm a, a lot better version of myself now than 12 months ago. So it's um, gives me a better chance to produce and to make a to make a result in in Tokyo. So I definitely feel with the pandemic and the post moment of the games, it worked in my favor. And yeah everything happens for a reason so maybe that's the reason. <laughs> exactly. Well that listen I love your confidence and I love your outlook and uh I can only wish you the best of luck yeah. with, with everything over the next coming months and the training and, and no doubt yeah. you will perform and I'm sure you will you will put on a great show and have the shirt ripped off like Scott Evans at some point <laughs> uh, with a big win. Um, yes, yes. Uh, this shirt is quite hard to rip off, but I will try to <laughs> work on it. It's, <laughs> it's too nice a shirt to yeah, rip. Yeah, FPD, um, FPD wouldn't be too happy with that. Yes. Uh, but I should mention, then, just for people who didn't hear at the start, FPD Insurance, uh, principal sponsor to Team Ireland since September 2018. And as part of that sponsorship, FPD is supporting Team Ireland's Olympic hopefuls, including Nat Nguyen. Uh, to enable them to focus on personal bests and breakthrough performances at these Summer Olympic Games in Tokyo. And as I said, you can head over to FBD's social channels to see the latest in FBD's My Olympic Journey video series featuring Nat Nguyen. Nat Nguyen, it's been an absolute pleasure to talk to you this afternoon and uh, very best of luck with the coming months.